Now that we looked at how to create multiple processes and wait for one another, I think the next step would be to learn what are process IDs. So what are they? Well, as the name implies, they are just IDs, so identification numbers for processes. And uh, this applies to all processes in uh, Linux. Basically, every single uh, every single process has an ID, a number that uh, is unique for that process. Uh, in this case, what we can do to get that ID is first include a header file called I'll include here sys slash wait dot h. In here, we're just forking the current processor. We should get two processes. And if we, for example, do something like printf percent d, and we call a function called get pid. So that's just gonna get the process ID for our um, for our current process that we're in. And this guy is very simple. It simply returns a pid underscore t. That's usually an int. So we can just use a percent %d here and it doesn't take in any parameters. So if we uh, call this, let me actually add a backslash n here so it's gonna look all right. If I launch this, we should get, of course, two IDs here on the screen. We get 3727 and 3722, okay? We can probably deduce that uh, this is the child process that was created from fork and this is the parent process that we have launched with our ID here. Now, another thing you can do is get a parent process ID. So here I can say, let's say current ID, current ID, and then parent ID percent D. I'm actually gonna have this here. And the second uh, function that we're gonna take a look at is called get PID. Uh, and that's basically, uh, the same as this one, except it returns the parent uh, process ID. So now if I try to run this, you'll notice I'm going to get both the current ID and the parent ID. So we're going to see that 3784 here, its parent is 3778. And here is the 3778 process. So this is the main uh, process that has launched this guy, this 3784. And it's its parent ID is 3772. And basically every process in uh, the system has a parent process ID that has launched that process, except the process with ID zero, that is the main process that launches everything. So uh, in our case, our 3778 has been launched by 3772, which is, I'm not exactly sure what process that is, probably created by the editor. Now, one interesting thing that we can do is, uh, well, remember, in the video, in the previous video, we talked about waiting from for one process to wait for another. In there, we in the parent process, we have waited for the child process, right? Because that's usually how processes should terminate. So uh, you sh always the child processes should terminate first before the parent process terminates. If it's the other way around, something more interesting happens. And let's try and do that. What we can do here is, well, Remember the ID is zero for the child process. So what you can say is if ID is zero, instead of uh, doing what the parent process does, also wait like, uh, I don't know, one second. I think one second should be enough. So that basically what's gonna happen is both of them are gonna start at the same time, but uh, since the child process is gonna wait, the parent process is gonna terminate. Okay, because it's gonna get to return zero and terminate the process completely. So you're gonna get to, uh, this print statement that's going to also get the parent ID. Now, the question is, what's the parent ID of that process? So if I launch this, you'll notice that after the act, these actual added lines by the editor, um, I get the last line here. The first line is for the parent process, right? The parent process has 3843 and its parent ID is 3837. Okay, and the child process here is its ID is 3848. So it's clearly the, the child process because its uh, ID is bigger than this guy, but it's not necessarily the case that it's always the, the case. But for now, I think we can uh, conclude that. And the parent ID is actually 1077, as you can see here, because, well, the parent ID was 3843, but it 
actually terminated. So because it terminated with having still child processes running, well, a new parent process has been assigned to that child process so that no, uh, so that we don't have processes that don't have a process ID or have their processes actually terminated. Because our parent process died before the child could uh, terminate its execution, it got assigned a new parent uh, process ID. And that is for my distribution of uh, Linux for my implementation was 1077. That's actually the system D uh, process. But uh, in some cases, it's going to be, a, of course, a different ID. In our case, it's actually going to be the process with ID one and so on and so forth. The main idea is that you're going to get a different parent process ID if you do that. And it's considered a zombie process because if you try to, uh, if you try to kill it with a sig kill command, it's not going to actually um, free the memory. Okay, so you, act you have to really wait for those uh, that are your child processes. Otherwise, the memory is not going to get uh, freed and you're going to have a memory leak. So really what you want to do in all your programs that use uh, the fork function is actually wait for them, for the child processes to finish before uh, you terminate the main process, right? So here, if ID is different than zero, so if we are in the parent process, then please wait. I'm gonna call here wait of null. I know in the, the, the previous uh, videos, I didn't, I didn't actually pass in a parameter here, but uh, one parameter that you can pass, and I have to pass it because I actually included wait.h, is uh, a pointer to something that tells us what's what's happened with that uh, with that process. Now, interestingly enough, you can actually call wait without even checking if it's apparent, because if it's not apparent like this, it's still gonna properly finish execution of the program. If I do launch this, it's still going to wait and finish the program uh, accordingly. So I'm gonna get here the child process 4064 and the parent 4000 57, which is here. Okay, so uh, you can wait because uh, what this is gonna do is gonna check if there is any uh, child process to wait for. And if it isn't, it's gonna just return, uh, I think, negative one. So if I see here, if this is equal to negative one, then let's say printf no children to wait for and back session. And if I run this, I'm going to get this uh, line of text once here and it says no children to wait for because there really wasn't any to wait for and it just uh, terminated like so. But interestingly enough, this wait call actually does return something pretty useful aside from just negative one if it errors. If it doesn't error, uh, let me type in else properly. We can actually take in that result. So I can say, let's let's actually add a result here. So result equals weight of null. And I'm gonna move this guy here. So if res is negative one, like we had before, it's gonna still print this on the screen. But if it's not negative one, then what I'm gonna say is percent d finished execution and backslash n. I'm gonna plop in here the res uh, result here. And if I try to launch this, you're gonna notice that I do get still these uh, two lines. And I'm gonna say, no children to wait for, that's probably for the child uh, process. And the parent process said 4,179 finished execution. So really what you get from uh, the wait call here is the process ID you actually waited for, right? And this is very useful, especially when you're dealing with multiple child uh, processes. So do keep in mind that you also get a process ID here or negative one if you don't have anything to wait for. And that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Uh, really just about process IDs. Every process has an ID. Every process has a parent ID and how it gets switched if the parent ID or the parent process doesn't exist anymore. Okay, so do keep in mind this and usually you should actually call wait at the end of the program if you are forking it anywhere. 
Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Take care. Bye.